In this video, I'll show you how to make your own YouTube subscriber counter using a 7.5 inch WaveShare e-ink display and a Raspberry Pi Zero to update it. The Raspberry Pi uses a Python script to query the YouTube API two to three times a day and then refresh the e-ink display to update it. It's really simple to make as it just uses the WaveShare hat for Raspberry Pis, so there's no soldering required. The e-ink display provides great visibility during the day, even in bright light, and only uses power when it's being refreshed, so the counter uses very little power when running. All you need for this project is a Raspberry Pi Zero W, an SD card, and a WaveShare e-ink display. Make sure that you order the display which includes the HAP display controller for the Raspberry Pi. You'll need the header pins to be soldered onto your Raspberry Pi, so if yours didn't come with them already installed, you'll need to install them before starting. I've used the 7.5 inch HD 3 color display, the 3 colors being white, black and red. You also get a 2 color version, which is just black and white, and then another 3 color version which is yellow instead of red. The red just works better for the YouTube play button. In the box you get the SBR display controller, which is designed as a Raspberry Pi hat, to plug directly onto the GPIO pins. It also includes a plug and a set of leads to connect the controller to another SPR capable device, such as an Arduino or ESP32. The actual display is really thin and has a thin ribbon cable at the bottom which plugs into the controller. To connect the electronics together, you simply lift the black flap on the back of the connector, plug the display's ribbon cable into the connector, and then push the black tab down to lock it into place. You'll need to prepare your SD card with an installation of Raspberry Pi OS, which can now easily be done using the Raspberry Pi utility for Windows or Mac computers. You just choose the operating system you'd like, then the SD card, and the utility does the rest for you. For this project, you can use the full version of Raspberry Pi OS, or the light version which doesn't have the graphical user interface, if you're comfortable using the terminal to set it up. Plug your formatted SD card into your Pi, and then plug the hats onto the GPI opens. You can now get started setting it up and testing the display. I'd suggest that you get it working like this before building it into the frame, if this is your first project using one of these e-ink displays. Now let's build the display into a frame. I found this cheap 6x8 inch box frame, which should work quite well. I started by removing the back layer to get to the white frame panel. This is likely sized for a 4x6 inch photo like mine so you'll need to open it up a bit using a craft knife and a ruler so that it fits your display. Peel off the protective film and carefully glue the back of the display to the frame, making sure that it's centered and straight. I use a drop of hot glue on the corners to hold it in place. Next, mark out and cut the slots in the back layer to pull the display's ribbon cable through. I also made holes to mount the Raspberry Pi onto the stand. Now reassemble the frame and clamp the back layer into place. Plug the display back into the controller and glue the connector in place so that it doesn't put any stress onto the display's ribbon cable. Now let's add some plastic standoff mounts to mount the Raspberry Pi in the hat. Your frame is now complete and ready for programming. 
The first time you boot up your PAL, it'll take a while to set up the operating system, get connected to a Wi-Fi network, and do any updates. Before you start with a Python script, there are a couple of libraries to install and set up steps to work through. If you're building your own counter, I'll guide you through this in detail, step by step through the link in the video description. I'll also show you how to set up your YouTube API key and channel ID, and set up the scheduled updates. The script is essentially based on the Waveshare example script, with a couple of minor changes and additions. We start by importing the libraries, functions and directories needed. We then use the YouTube API to get the subscriber count and number of views. We format the return numbers with commas and finally connect to the display to update it. The script then puts the display into a low power sleep again until the next update. Try running the script and after a few seconds you should see your display start to refresh. The full refresh of the display does take quite a while, somewhere around 30 seconds on the Raspberry Pi Zero. The flickering is normal for these controllers and is done to prevent burn-in on the display. It'll first flicker black and white to clear the display, then load a black and white version of the image, and finally replace some of the black with red. Once you've got the script working, you'll just need to schedule the script to run using crontab. Mine updates the display every 8 hours, running 3 times a day. You could probably just refresh the display once a day, but Waveshare recommend updating the display at least once every 24 hours to prevent burn-in so I just went with every 8 hours to be safe. I wanted to build this particular counter using a Raspberry Pi Zero W, but you could also use an ESP32 to use even less power by putting the controller to sleep between updates to the display. This is something that's difficult to do on a Raspberry Pi. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section, and let me know if you're going to build your own. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.